Today on Knife Banner, we're talking Benchmades, but we're not talking any bug outs. No! Let's talk knives. How's it going guys and welcome to Knife Banner. Today we are talking top five Benchmades with our guy Troy from Benchmade Knives. How's it going Troy? I am well, Zach. How are you? Dude, doing great. So stoked to be able to talk with you. And uh, we, I'm actually really excited about what we have on the table. So yeah. we are, uh, we're talking top five. So what me and Troy did guys is uh, he kind of picked his top five. I picked my top five. I've got four here, he's got four there and then we agreed on one. So hold on till the end to see which one both me and Troy think is a top bench made right now at least. <laughs> and also, it's, as I said in the intro- take, It didn't take much like agreement no. or back and forth. <laughs> this was a very like organic mutual pick. Yeah, it was basically instant. We were like, oh yeah, this we'll do this one number one. <laughs> yeah, since you swindled me out of one. They stole it from us. So I figured we both liked it. <laughs> we got a good story on that. <laughs> All right, so to kick it off, I actually chose one that doesn't get a lot of spotlight, but I have been in love with for a while now. Um, and uh, that is the Saddle Mountain Skinner. And man, this thing, it is just such a, not just a beautiful fixed blade, right? But just such a usable fixed blade. Yeah. You know, you've got the wood scales, you've got the S30V blade, you've got, you know, jimping in all of the right places. And uh, man, I love this thing. And then to top it all off, it comes with just a beautiful sheath, right? Yeah, I like that knife a lot. The Saddle Mountain's interesting. So Saddle, the Saddle Mountain unit is a very popular hunting unit here in Oregon. Um, it's out towards the Oregon coast. So elk, deer, bear, I mean, everything. It's got everything you need. Um, and that knife is just, it's, it's such a traditional aesthetic, um, but you've kind of blended in the modern performance of S30 and um, like a resin impregnated wood handle. So it's it's uh it appeals to those that have been in the community for a long time you know from a hunting standpoint um maybe if you've got someone in your camp or crew that likes a, a more traditional knife um but is looking for today's performance that thing is just a quiver killer i absolutely love it yeah no it's awesome and i mean talking about modern and traditional right like I mean, all the way down to like, you still get the pinch grip, right? In, I mean, it's a true hunting knife, a true skinning knife, um, but yeah, just beautiful, right? Yeah, yep. Yeah. I really like that. So I'll kind of stick on your, uh, your category here. My personal favorite hunt knife is, no surprise, the Altitude. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, so I've got the 15200 ORG right here. I'm a big fan of visibility. Um, it's tough when things are dark or you're tired, you know, you've been working your butt off to get to where you are at that point where you can finally pull this knife out of your pack and use it. Um, and so having the high vis orange here is helpful in so many ways. Um, and a cool thing too, is that this knife was designed for your like ultralight minimalist backpack hunter. But I use this thing on pretty much every critter I put in my freezer. Critter control. From something as simple as duck up to elk, you know? Um, so S90V, I love this thing. Holds an edge forever, super easy to maintain the edge. Um, and then we partnered up with First Light and did a fusion pattern on the sheet there. So. Great edge retention. You can run it as a neck knife if you want. A lot of guys do run it as a neck knife in the field. This thing is so low profile. It just sits in my kill kit in my pack until I'm ready to get to work. Oh, that's awesome. We, yeah, we um, sat down a little while ago with the guys from Mountain Ops. And mm -hmm. uh, they were talking about, you know, they, until that time, they had been using a lot of kind of the traditional, what a lot of traditional hunters use, you know, with the... Uh, you know, whatever pot metal knife and just running it through, a, <laughs> you know, a run through sharpener 20 times while they're processing yeah. an animal. And they, both of them, I think, picked up an altitude. And I know for sure one of the dudes, he's in love with it. Yeah. Um, now you've, you, you do a lot more hunting. I mean, I've been hunting a long time and you're very active in it. Uh, so you've processed big game with that altitude and with good results then. Yeah. Yep. So I was on the test audience when we were, before we'd ever released the knife. Um, and I actually cut myself. It's a beautiful cut. Like so badly with that thing while oh, I was no. testing it. So, um, 
Hans, I'm Hans was actually the hunt and outdoor product manager at the time. So I, I was texting him and I was like, dude, I love this knife. I cut the crap out of my hand with it. It works great. It's officially mine. Um, but yeah, you bled on it. <laughs> oh my gosh, man. I like, yeah, it was, it was a mess, but, um, I was super impressed with the performance and I, a big part of it for us too is like you mentioned kind of super simple steels that a lot of people have been using forever. Um, but now what you're seeing a lot is like replaceable blade knives, um, something that's disposable. And that's just not who we are as Benchmade. We don't want you to ever feel obligated to leave a product of ours behind. That's why we have such a phenomenal warranty and free sharpening and all this stuff. Like we want that product to last more than anything. And there's something super special with passing a knife down, whether it's a hunting knife or not, it doesn't matter. I think we all remember who we got our first knife from. And a lot of us probably still have that knife. I know I still have my first knife. Um, and so to be able to build an heirloom product and something that truly performs and, and has longevity to it is, is special to us just as much as it's special to the, the person using it beyond Benchmade, you know? Yeah, I like I like that design philosophy a lot. Not not having to leave something behind, right? From from Benchmade, and and it definitely stands in the Life Sharp service and everything that you get when you purchase a Benchmade. You know, exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, and so kind of taking almost the opposite end of the spectrum of knives that Benchmade makes, but this one has been on my radar for a while, and that's the uh, the Auto Crack, right? Mm. So this would be this would be my number, I guess four number four pick. Yeah, my number four pick would be the Auto Crack. So. I think so much is right about the Autocrat. And the Infidel is a great OTF. There's some other, you guys do some other OTFs that I think are great, but it wasn't until the Autocrat that I was like, ooh, I might have to get me a Benchmade OTF. Um, yeah. I think just the form factor of it, uh, the action of it, right? The little color pops on this particular one. You, you know, obviously there's also the, uh, the green one and the brown one. And then, you know, deep carry pocket clip. I just feel like everything came together on this knife to make it almost an instant classic, like almost a knife that you just be like, yeah, no, you could carry this anywhere. You could do anything. That's, that's music to our ears, man. It's interesting with the Autocrat too, because we like, I mean, so many of our black class designs really trend towards that professional tactical use side of the spectrum. Um, and that's awesome, but there are plenty of people in the world that like to carry cool stuff like that, that aren't necessarily operators or law enforcement or anything like that. And so we put some like EDC inspired flourishes of color through that blue anodization and it's got a smooth G10 handle to it as opposed to the more tactically driven flavors of the Autocrat that we've done since then that have the like really textured peel ply yeah. uh, G10 handles on them. So it's a super cool knife. I call them the adult fidget spinners. Um, you get a lot of <laughs> eyebrow raises when you're out at dinner with your wife and you like pop that thing out to, uh, to cut a steak with it or whatever. I, I absolutely love those things. No, and I think I think that speaks to something it definitely adult fidget spinner, right? This and like a balisong, right? Like those yep. adult fidget spinners. Um, and you know, I mean, with the balisongs, you guys got you have still have guys that like are doing it as a sport, which is cool. Yeah. Um, but I think especially with this one, you pull this thing out, like you said, um, it might come off a little intimidating initially, but I think these pops of color it's pop. add something to it where you're almost gonna you're gonna draw that attention and then you're almost gonna pull people in. I, yes. Like I say this often where like as knife guys, we're almost ambassadors. We're like like let people know like, no, you can carry a knife and not be scary, right? Right. And and this is a not scary knife, even though it is, you know, that that double action OTF, right? Yep, totally. It's, <laughs> a, it's a fun one to like put in people's hands at trade shows and stuff like that, especially I do a lot of the hunt side of trade shows and, and so people are looking at fixed blades and bright orange and all that good stuff, but you put one of those things in their hand and it's just like, you can just see them light up, you know, and they'll sit there and fidget with it for like 10 minutes. And then their wives are kind of like dragging them away. Like, all right, let's go right. see the rest <laughs> of the show, you know, like let's get this thing rolling. So, uh, autocrat's a great knife. I don't have any black class here uh, yet, but uh, one knife that I carry a lot and has kind of turned me on to A, larger knives, and B, M4 is mm. the Super Freak. Super Freak! Um, so mine has been accompanying me with some like drywall work. Uh, with quarantine, I've been ripping into projects at the house. And I got to this point where I was just like, I want to see how far this knife will go. 
And it's, I mean, it's M4, so I'm going to have to be like an absolute jerk with this thing to <laughs> right. get it to break or fail in any well, way. Well, I'm going to say cutting drywall with it. That's pretty, that's pretty jerk level, man, because that's drywall's gnarly. <laughs> it is, it is. Um, but I, I knew this knife could handle it. And like I said, I'm generally not carrying super large folders. Um, I'm a skinny dude and I wear relatively skinny pants for the most part. So like having this huge, enormous folder in my pocket isn't always the most comfortable. Um, but this thing has kind of killed a lot of knives in my rotation uh, just because I know it can hang. It can do everything. And I love the coloring of the black and gray G10 with a slight pop of red on that base layer and the anodization on the standoffs. So I swapped mine to a mini deep carry and this thing has just been an absolute tank for me. So like I said, I was hesitant about M4 being here in Oregon and, and being outside a lot like I am. I just like, I'll be the first, but you can tell I don't clean my knives very much. So um, I was hesitant about the corrosion resistance properties of M4. And once I started carrying this thing, I just, I realized I didn't have anything to worry about. This thing's awesome and can totally hang with the best of them. So super freak, man. I love it. No, that's great, man. There is something to be said. I'm, I'm kind of with you. I've I've almost always carried smaller knives. Um, mm -hmm. But then recently, like the last year or two, I've gotten my hands on a couple bigger knives. And there is something about it, as long as it's pocketable, right? As long as it feels good in the pocket. And the Superfruit's yep. a great one because it's it's got enough contour. Like you said, you throw a deep carry pit clip on it and boom, right? Like now it's disappearing even more. But there's something about having that big knife where you pull it out, you're just like, dude, I can do anything, right? Yeah, it's great. <laughs> and it's another thing too, is like as good as it feels in the pocket, the ergonomics of the knife are spot on. I mean, you like with a hard use day, if you're not wearing gloves or anything like that, um, you're sweating, you know, you're creating hot spots. It's just, you're, you're gonna struggle to find a hot spot on that knife. It's incredibly comfortable in hand. Yeah, well, and talking of hard use, that's actually the next one that I have up is uh, I've actually got the bailout, also in M4, as it turns out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, man, I will tell you, so, you know, the first run of the bailout, um, it was cool. It was exciting, right? Um, but it, it wasn't my jam. And then you guys ran this one. And this one is, I think this is like, when I, when I, when I think of what I heard about the first bailout and kind of the design ideas and why it existed, this is actually, I think, the knife that I had in my head. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, aluminum handles, obviously, with the access lock. Um, I love the pommel with the glass breaker. And the thing that you guys did 100% correct on this is the texturing on these handles. Yes. Right? Yes. Like, it is so good. I, I think, um, man, I can't remember the first time I handled. I think it was with you. I don't remember which show we were at. Probably but, shot, maybe before. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, probably shot. But anyways, I just remember touching this and being like, dude, every... Like every aluminum handle or titanium handle needs to just feel like this. Like, yeah. So good, like grippy and, and smooth, but not slippery, right? Yep. It's Ugh. just enough. Um, I love that knife. And it's it's cool, too. That's a knife that's really turned a lot of people into Tonto fans. You know, I see like I, we see stuff on Instagram all the time on our own account and others. But um, a lot of people are like, dude, I. I just don't care about Tontos whatsoever. And this knife has completely changed it. And we've seen people reprofile it and stuff like that and go drop or whatever they want to do. But for the most part that like, I, I was in that same boat. I, I didn't care about Tontos whatsoever. And that knife has completely changed it for me. Yeah. Well, and so I'm, I'm, I was already a Tonto guy. So you had, you already had me. <laughs> there you go, man. There you go. Yeah. That's, I, I love that thing. It's uh it's cool. And it's, I mean, we're definitely not done with that kind of platform that had started from the bug out. I know we weren't going to talk about it in this video, yeah. everybody, but <laughs> how dare you? Um, yeah, between the bug out and the bailout, like that's we're just I've said it before. We're at the tip of the iceberg right now. No, and that's the thing is I I, I think especially something like this because a lot of people they they'll talk about the bug. I'm like, ah, oh, it's too flimsy. It's whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, right. So, but if you want something lightweight, boom. Right. Here's the answer to that. You know, yeah, lightweight totally. and feels like a tank in your hand. Yeah. Um, I do have to ask. So was the intention here? So obviously the glass breaker was the intention here still to be able to use this as a bit of a, a hammer pommel as well as a glass breaker or primarily glass breaker? Primary glass, bre That's what glass I figured. breaker. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I'd recommend pommeling with that too hard. Um, 
I'm always willing to try it myself, but right. <laughs> well, that's I why I ask because nice. I'm the type I'm the type of idiot that like I wouldn't care about the glass breaker, but I'm like, oh, I need yeah. a hammer. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Um, yeah, I don't know. I haven't seen anybody go uh, go in on that thing super tough, so I can't say from firsthand experience or anything like that. But you never know. Yeah, for sure. But anyways, bailout. Uh, this is definitely in my top five for Benchmade, especially right now. Love it. Um, so I'm going to flex a little bit. Um, I've got one that I, this is like a fancy knife that I carry when I'm going somewhere special, um, or whatever. But when we kind of upgraded the materials on the custom knife builder on our website, I I've always loved the mini crooked river. I think it checks a lot of the same boxes for me that the saddle mountain Skinner does that you brought up earlier. It's modern technology, modern function with a tr very traditional aesthetic. Um, I've kind of strayed from the traditional aesthetic in what I've built, but I'm a sucker for Jade G10. And I went with a Dama Steel blade on this guy and then a Jade matching backspacer here. So just super clean. I love this thing. Um, I was just anxious to, to get one in my pocket. So I... I held out on the custom knife builder for quite a while. And then finally, when we added these materials, I was like, that's now's my time. So like done. Yeah. Yeah. Mini crooked, uh, with a little Dama steel blade there and yeah, just kind of a fancy dress knife. I'm not one to like match knives to outfits or anything. I get lucky if I wear clean clothes in the morning to begin with. So, uh, this thing is just, it's, it's an eyebrow razor, you know, like I'll leave it out and people that aren't knife people always pick it up and are like, dude, what, like how much does this thing cost? What is this? You know? And, um, I've really enjoyed carrying it just like the standard mini crooked. It's just a great knife. I gift the mini crooked a lot to people, you know, that's like, Oh, that's cool. I, yeah. It's a safe bet. You know, I, oh, like, yeah. it's, you're hard pressed to find somebody that doesn't like that knife. Um, whether or not they're into knives to begin with. Um, but yeah, just a super solid carrier and they're just, they're robust, man, for how small and slim they are. They just feel good. Yeah, no, the Mini Crooked is really awesome. Uh, Kurt has one of those, and so he'll carry it from time to time. So we've all been able to like kind of play with it and get dirty with it. And yeah. uh, I really like that the Mini Crooked River. It is a good one. Um, yeah. I, one thing that I love, though, is I love that you brought a little flex to the table. I feel like, you know, so we've been doing these kind of remote at home videos. Every single person we've had on because they're at home. So they have their, you know, personal, more of their personal knives. And everyone, exactly. Every one of them is like, yeah, I got a little flex, just a little flex here. Little flex here. <laughs> <laughs> so mini Crooked River. Awesome. And then I love to see a little flex. I love it. <laughs> yeah. it's. I like, I mean, working at the company, I'd like bringing home knives all the time. And I used to get, when I started, I used to get super excited to, to show my wife and she's not into knives whatsoever. And so, um, I, I kind of gave up at a certain point in trying to like pick a knife that would impress her and bring it home. And so I had, I had just stopped caring for a couple months and we dropped the mini crooked river and I brought that thing home and I just left it on the coffee table. And I, I came home later that day and she was like, what is this knife? I need one. And I was like, really? Finally, this is the one like of all the knives, but it makes sense to me. And now hindsight's 2020, I guess. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, so uh, my number two pick before we get to the one that we both have agreed on, Benchmade Osborne, man. Like you just, you can't, you can't talk top five Benchmade without talking about the Osborne, right? Like the Osborne has paved the way for so, I feel like for so much of what Benchmade is now and what Benchmade does now, I feel mm -hmm. like came from the success of this knife. What do you guys, it's 25 years now, right? On 20, the, this is the 20. 20, 20. yeah, yep. there it is. Yeah, yeah, yep. So you're a dash two guy. Yeah, you know, I am. I'm a Dash 2 guy. To be honest, I'm not partic super particular, though. Um, this just happened to be the one that, like, had a little bit of, you know, backspacer pop because I, I like that about uh, about some of the 940s having some pop of color to them. And so yeah. I just grabbed it. But I actually have no strong preference either way. Okay. Yeah, dude, I, the 940, I mean, we've said it before, right? Like, it, beyond, far beyond Benchmade, if there was a Rushmore of EDC knives, I think that that knife has every right to be on it. Um Working like Warren was well before my time at the company, but in everything that I've gleaned from people that have had the opportunity to work with him are just nothing but high praise. And I, I feel honored to work at a company that has worked so closely with somebody like that. Um, 
and the 940 is just like the quintessential design that we've we've collaborated on with him so it's cool to be in the 20th year of it um again we're, we're not done with the 940 this year so um cool. we're excited as to what the future holds with it and um excited where it's been you know it's just it's it's a cool knife. I hunt with that knife a lot, honestly. Um, hmm. That's kind of like my EDC in the field a lot of the times. If I'm not packing a knife that should be not be named uh, the bug out. <gasps> How dare you! Um, <laughs> but it's I'm a big fan of the Dash one. It's S90V, so I get the same edge retention I get out of my altitude. If yeah. I do want to break something down with it, um, but you get the lightweight build of carbon fiber, so. I have this like unbelievable curse with 940s, unfortunately, where I like, I don't lose knives, but I lose 940s. Like it's my job. So I oh, just bought a new Dash 1 yesterday, actually, um, because I lost mine fishing or something like, I, I don't remember where I lost it, but um, yeah, I lost that one. And then I just lost the uh, Titanium 940-2001, so. Oh no, did you really? Yeah, if you guys see one floating around, holler at me. (laughs) That one, that one was that was a beautiful knife, man. (laughs) Yeah, I'm a sucker for S90, um, and I think that the geometry of that blade complements that particular steel very well, just like it does on the altitude. Relatively thin blade stock behind the edge, so I was bummed that I lost that one. And I like picked out a special limited number and stuff like that. So. Unfortunately, I, I have very little hope at this point in time. I've, I've torn my house apart pretty good trying to find it, and I think oh. she's just gone. Well, you know, some knives, I got this, this term, boomerang knives, right? Like, some knives are boomerang knives. You lose no them. No pun intended. Yeah, and then they come back, right? And then they yeah. come back. So <laughs> There's a boomerang on the back of the 940. Exactly. That's- that's Warren's logo. So. Exactly. I think it works out, man. So ho- hopefully, at least hopefully that uh, that titanium one will come back around because, man, that's a that's a pretty knife. That's one that I'm most bummed on. The Dash yeah. one, obviously, I've already replaced. But right. yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, definitely a bummer there. So uh, transitioning, we've done, we've done a fixed blade each. I'm going to up the ante and do a second fixed blade. Um, right. This one's relatively new. Not wildly different than stuff you guys have seen before. But I actually have the 202 Leku with me. Um, oh, nice. So this is the bigger brother of the Puko. Um, we're sticking with S30 or uh, 3V, excuse me. We have updated the heat treat on them. Um, all our 3V heat treat's been updated. And this guy is about a half inch longer than the Puko. Uh, you still get the same sheath. It's a leather sheath fire rod dangler or fire rod loop and a a little dangler there i have this guy kind of just like pinned in the back of my pickup truck all the time for kind of like a camp knife um but i absolutely love this thing it's super comfortable in hand the over molded santa prune handle is just like hot spot free no matter what um reverse grip forward grip whatever you're doing with it if you're feather sticking batoning doing things you shouldn't be doing with a knife, like you're going to be comfortable no matter what. So that is the Leku. Uh, this guy's coming soon. We've, I've seen some comments and stuff before about people having difficulty striking off like Pharaoh mm-hmm. with the spine of the Leku as opposed to something like a Bushcrafter. Um, I can't say I've experienced that same difficulty. I was striking on this thing a couple days ago um, while I was bear hunting and it performed exactly how I needed it to without a, without a whole world of effort. So I really like this thing. It's a great knife, a little bit longer, a little bit more comfortable, uh, just a super solid. You guys have done some pretty wild torture testing with the, uh, the Puko and a, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we've done, a, we've done some pretty, some pretty wild stuff with that. And, uh, yeah, the, I've got one of the original three V Pucos. And okay. when you talk about on the handle of that thing, of it just being tough and, also no hot spots and being comfortable to work with. Like I can attest to that, man. Like cool. I sat down and and just we put that thing through so many torture tests of batoning and, and feather sticking and yeah. There's one of the best knives I've ever used where it didn't cause some sort of a hot spot, right? That's awesome. I've heard I've heard some whispers of things that you guys have done with your Pucos. Um, <laughs> and I'm I'm hoping that that content sees the light of day at some point. But yeah, uh, yeah these these knives can absolutely take a beating. They are yeah. impressive. Yeah, we might have you know 
Baton couple pans and maybe Baton some other knife blades and or yeah, maybe yeah, like yeah. A bicycle frame. Yeah, bicycle frame. We might have baton on a bicycle frame. So we might maybe one day, maybe one day that'll make make the light of day. <laughs> it's all just hearsay right now. It's all hearsay. I can't <laughs> confirm or deny anything. <laughs> But I will say I haven't I haven't had a chance to use that Leku because it's like brand brand new um, and uh, I think we're gonna have some this video drops on Friday so you guys watching okay. it right when it drops thanks for being here um, I think next week uh, after this video drops we're gonna have a few hopefully uh, that's a yeah. plan yeah um, that's that's our plan too yeah yeah exactly great <laughs> so I did get a hold one though because uh, we fulfilled some pre-orders recently and I did get a hold one. And you said it was only half inch longer than the Puko. It feels longer than that, like in a good way. Like it feels yeah. like a real big knife. Yeah, um, it definitely so cool. feels big without being unmanageable. Yeah. You know, you got a lot of real estate on the blade. I was, I was batoning, when I started batoning with it the first time, I was like, dude, this is awesome. I, it's like the Puko was close for me. I just needed a little bit more length towards that tip so I could really get into it when I am splitting wood and batoning. And, and this guy gives it to you in folds. I love it. Cool, cool. Right on, man. All right. Uh, Should we like it? count to three and both that's, like pull it? Out? Do you ha you have you have one with you? Oh, it's in my pocket. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Uh, this is in my pocket right. too. Actually, funny enough. All right. Okay. One, two, three. Boom. Mediator. Mediator, dude. <laughs> if anybody has been watching the content we've been doing recently, you guys will know this is all I've been carrying recently. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's. Now, uh, it's a great knife, man. I mean, we talked a little bit about EDC tactical crossover and, and Benchmade's been very traditional in their, in their outlook for a long time. If it's automatic, it's going in the black class, you know, and that black class is so defined for professional tactical use and application. This is something that EDC guys can just sink their teeth into and enjoy every bit of it and S90B. And that's what I was going to say is it's it's definitely EDC friendly all the way around. But then you throw S90V on, you throw this awesome kind of reverse tanto, right? Like blade shape on it. And man, this thing, it it's a great EDC, but it's also like, yeah, I would have no problem throwing this at any task that I would do with any other knife. For sure. Um, and we didn't, we didn't completely ignore the tactical side of things or community when we designed this knife. We, I think things have trended for a long time towards like bigger and beefier and heavier and stronger for the tactical community. And those guys are rocking vests that are like 40 pounds. They've got super heavy belts on and there's just, there's simply no need to add unnecessary weight, um, to your kit when you can have a knife perform arguably just as well as some of the larger frame designs out there um, without just being a brick, you know, like you think about this compared to an Adamus or something like that. Yep. And this guy can slide in on a Molly on Molly webbing super easy. So he can have it on his chest he can ride it in his pocket, super comfortably too. Um, it's a versatile knife. And, and like we said, we didn't try to leave either side of that community, those communities out in the cold with this design. So um, as soon as we drop this thing, I mean, it's like as close as you can get to uh, an auto 940 in my opinion. So yeah. I, I love this thing and the texturing is great. Multi-directional texture on the G10. So that's my uh, soapbox for the mediator. <laughs> no, dude, I've been on the soapbox like ever since, ever since shot show 2020, right? Like last shot show when I first saw this knife. I straight up, I was like, that is that is the bench made knife for 2020. Whether I'm right or wrong, I don't. It, it's not important because for me, this is the bench made knife for 2020. Now I know you guys got some tricks up your sleeve still to come out this year, so I might you might surprise me. <laughs> but Possibly. right now, yeah, yeah, right now, man, this mediator, it this is what it's all about. Now you you did say at the beginning of this thing though that I swindled you out of one, which. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to throw you under the bus a second time, but since you've already done it, no. Zach hatched a very brilliant plan yeah. <laughs> to get one of these knives from me, and it obviously worked. <laughs> All right, so so here's the deal, guys. We knew that we wanted to do this video. Uh, we were actually hoping that we'd be able to get together maybe like in person or something, but you know, here we are. And so we didn't have, uh, Blade HQ didn't have mediators yet. This is a little while ago. And so I, I hit up Trice. I said, Troy, can you send me a mediator so we can have one for the video, blah, blah, blah. So it, obviously it sat on my desk and I drooled on it a lot. <laughs> and, uh, and, and this is legitimately did not do this on purpose, but I subconsciously, there was probably some purpose in this. Uh, I ended up grabbing the wrong knife off the table. I threw this in my pocket and I've got, I carry a copper pen 
and yeah. the copper on the pen like wore off. I don't know if it'll come across on the camera, but it like wore off on the back of the blade and kind of scratched oh, it up a yeah. bit. Yeah. And I was like, I mean, I'm not mad, but dang, I feel bad, you know? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm I'm just giving you crap, man. It's uh it's it's totally good. I'm I'm glad it has a good home and that it's being used by somebody. Um it's just uh it's dude, it's a classy knife. It's functional. It's it is. simple. It's it's not there's no frills really. It's just like what you see is what you get. I think that's what I like about it, the no frills. But um, yeah, so it's so as as you guys watching know, we have a knife library at Blade HQ. So this will get pocket time with other people once they pry it for my cold dead hands because I love it so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you're liking it. I'm super happy that you yeah. like it. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it's definitely been a cool knife for us to play around with, and I'm I'm excited to see how it does. Cool, man. All right. Well. Uh, I've had a blast going through these. Uh, hopefully you guys following along, you've seen some of your favorites on the table. Um, I know there was one favorite of a lot of you that was missing, but uh, we intentionally left it out. So, you know, mm -hmm. it's fine. It's fine. No big deal. Everybody knows. Everybody knows yeah. about that. So we yeah. threw some threw some out there that maybe don't get the same spotlight because their big brother is kind of casting a big shadow right now. <laughs> yeah, the Blade HQ fans have really like scared me from carrying bug outs in public, you know, at like right. trade shows or Blade or anything like that. I like I love carrying that knife, but yeah, these guys have have really uh, made me watch my carry. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel like Jamie and Kurt carry it all the time just because of that, right? They're like, I think no, Kurt likes time. pressing buttons. He, he likes poking the bear. You poke the bear one too many times. And yeah. I, I respect that about him. He's also a Seahawks fan, so that's super cool. Um, <laughs> but we, we won't go there. We will go there. <laughs> right on, man. Well, uh, thank you so much for your time. This has been a blast. Um, do, before we sign off, you have any secrets you want to leak out to the public right now? You, you want to get in trouble or no? We, we'll just end it. No, I'm, I'm walking a fine line right now. Perfect. So um, first and foremost, I mean, I just I hope that everybody watching is is safe and healthy um, and enjoying the time at home with their loved ones, you know, take advantage of it um, and appreciate your health and be smart. For sure, those are great words, man. When And we feel the same exact way. We're glad you guys are doing well up there and uh, that Benchmade's doing well. And uh, thank you guys for following along. Let us know down in the comments what your favorite Benchmade knives are. And we'll catch you on the next one. Oh, hey, welcome to the end screen. Hey, if you like this video, consider hitting subscribe to Blade HQ. We'd love to have you as a subscriber. Also, if you want to see some of the knives that Zach and Troy talked about in this episode, head on over to bladehq.com. Lots of great knives over there. That link down below, knife playlist, bunch of great knife content. We'll see you on the next one.